So if you're watching this video, you might be thinking about retiring here in St. George, Utah. And if you're thinking about retiring, you might be wondering, well, what am I going to do? Like, what are some things that we can do when we retire because we're going to have all this time? So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk about what are some of the really fun things that you can do in St. George if you're thinking about retiring here. This one is pretty obvious. Pretty much the number one request. Yes, it's a huge reason why people come here to St. George, and that is the golf, right? Yes. We have great golf courses here. I think Golf Magazine or Golf.com, they actually rated St. George as the best golfing community in the American Southwest. So that's saying a lot because there's a lot of golf communities here in the American Southwest. For sure, and also what's interesting is that what people love about it, so not only do we have a variety of golf courses, you know, and again, a lot of them are like absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. But also the year-round aspect of being able yes. to golf. Like that's a huge thing about thing about St. George is mm -hmm. that we can actually golf pretty much year-round. Mm -hmm. Which again, you can't say like we get a lot of people reaching out to us that are you know, especially up, like you know, in up north, right? Yeah. And they're just like they're done. They're done with the snow. They're done with the rain. They're done mm -hmm. with like the the cloudiness. Mm -hmm. They want to be in the sun. And mm -hmm. we here we have. A plethora of a plethora of sun. Yeah, and we also don't get that cold here. I mean, not to say that it can't get, you know, in like freezing temperatures and stuff, but it's just we rarely ever get snow. Yeah. It's, and usually, you know, by the afternoon it warms up, so it's just so nice. You know, in other parts of the countries where all of the golf courses are under snow and not usable for several months. Here you can golf pretty much any day of the year. Yeah, and that's a huge, huge thing. People, I've, I've had tons of people reaching out. They want to be able to golf year round, and we're able that, uh, to offer that. And on top of that, there's a lot of residential communities that are built mm -hmm. around these golf courses. So if that's something that's really you know appealing to you, because obviously every community offers different you know association dues, different other amenities. They may be gated, they may be not, or they may have a huge waiting list. Yes, like there's some communities that have like really big waiting lists. Yes, to get uh, to be able to use the golf course yes yeah so if you have questions about that definitely reach out to us because Sean and I we are uh, licensed realtors here in the state of Utah so we can help you with everything that you need if you're thinking about living in a golf community here in st. George so another very very popular activity here is pickleball yes. there's lots of pickleball courts and like we were saying with the golf like you can do it pretty much all year round same yes. with pickleball yeah so the general theme here for all of these activities mm -hmm. one st. George offers a ton of different activities which we're gonna get to but also just realize that a lot of these activities are outdoors because mm -hmm. people are here they want to experience the outdoors and mm -hmm. again we have that year-round outdoor experience which is pretty amazing yeah and even in the summer you know obviously everyone knows here in st. George it gets super hot but you can still get a lot of outdoor time in the early morning not to say that it's not you know 60 degrees in the early morning but actually we, we have a friend she's retired here and she actually plays pickleball in the summer three hours a day she gets up she's on the court by 6 a.m. off the court by 9 a.m. and that's her activity for the day when it's super super hot yeah so, and a little bit yeah and using that a little bit of a you know strategy as far as if you want to take in a lot of the outdoor activity like she's dead she's Totally right. Basically, you want to basically that the mornings in St. George, even when it's brutally hot, the mornings are pretty, you know, are actually yeah. tolerable and yeah. pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And then again, as the day progresses, it definitely gets hotter, hotter, hotter. And even in the afternoons, it can be hot. So you want to get your activities in really primarily mm -hmm. if you're going to be outdoors mm -hmm. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So another big activity that people really like to do, uh, whether you're from the age of two to the age of 102, is hiking. Yes. Obviously, uh, St. George and the surrounding area is just world famous for its beauty. Yes, the red cliffs, just the terrain, it's mm -hmm. just amazing. I mean, again, national parks right next, you know, literally from St. George itself to like to the entrance of, let's say, Zion is like 40 minutes maybe, mm -hmm. something or, like that? No, a little more, like 50. To the entrance, from your house to the entrance, if you're living in St. George. If you're living, you know, in Hurricane, it's it's much, much uh, closer. closer. Yes. But then even, you know, Snow Canyon State Park, I feel like that gets overlooked oh, yeah, a lot. Oh, yeah, for I sure. I mean, it's like, like 15, 15 minutes, minutes yeah. from city center, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Tons of hiking out there. I mean, there's hiking everywhere. It is, that's one of the big reasons that people love to live here because of the outdoor hiking opportunities. Yeah, not only is the terrain, but honestly, just taking in the beauty. You really, mm -hmm. uh, it, it looks like, you know, even when you have Snow Canyon, for instance, you might be right up to the, like, right up to where some of these, you know, like, cliffs are. 
and you still think that someone painted them. Mm -hmm. You don't, you just go, this is, can't be real. This, mm -hmm. the red with the brown and the green and sometimes the white with the dusting of snow. It is just spectacular to see. Mm -hmm. So another big activity around here is cycling. Um, I think that's part of, part of the reason is because we do have like a big triathlon community here because triath we do host Ironman events here in St. George. Yeah, the national, the champion, the, the world championships actually. Yeah, the world championships were here, which is unusual. It's usually in Hawaii. Obviously had to do with COVID, but. Yeah. <laughs> But we do tend to host at least one Ironman event. And the half Ironman World Championships is actually here pretty consistently. Yeah, it's been here several times. So, yeah, it was actually just here. And there were people, you know, tons of people from all over the world came here to St. George to cycle here in just the stunning beauty that we have. Yeah, and again, because there's bike paths all over the place. Mm -hmm. And they really can take you far out there. So, yeah. it's just really well suited to help, you know, with cycling for sure. Mm -hmm. And then kind of speaking to that, so the next point is running. Again, yes. we're talking about triathlons, let's look at the running part. Mm -hmm. That, again, same thing. You mm -hmm. have lots of trails, yes. paths, and all this stuff. And of course, yeah. where you'd be hiking, you could possibly be running depending mm -hmm. on the terrain. So, again, just because it helps being former collegiate runners and stuff like that, we really appreciate when you can do nice trail running. It's, mm -hmm. it's nice and we do have a ton of that here. And you do see a lot of runners. I mean, yes. the other day I actually saw she was an older woman. She was jamming to Lady Gaga <laughs> and she and her and her husband were running, you know, down the path. And you see that everywhere. Like you see runners everywhere of all ages. You know, it's just very popular here. Yes, definitely. Water aerobics is actually another activity here that's uh, quite popular because we do have two indoor facilities, uh, two pools, uh, the Sand Hollow Pool, and then we also have the Washington City has a pool, and they do have a lot of water aerobics. I've Again, I've, I've gone with my kids just to get some energy out, and there's very, very large classes of water aerobics and some pretty badass people do it. I mean, they come out, they've got, the, you know, their... I don't know, I'm guessing they're in their 70s and 80s. They got their tattoos and <laughs> it's just, and it's a big community. So yeah, that's just another thing that you can do. And because it's indoors, uh, be, even if, you know, the like the, in the dead of the, like the dead of summer, like, you know, where it's brutally hot and all stuff. Again, when you're indoors, these pools obviously offer a fantastic way to get out of that heat. Mm -hmm. And then continuing with our theme of just the beautiful outdoors. Yes. Camping is a huge, very popular uh, activity, not only for retirees, but people from all ages. I yes. mean, it's, you just drive around St. George, you see all the RV uh, garages, all the RVs, and people love camping. Yeah, and so like whether they're camping with their RV, or they got their tents, or they're glamping, because mm -hmm. there's there, there are those activities here as well, people just, again, the, the common theme here is, you know, outdoors, like weather is really, mm -hmm. uh, like, really works with it that you can go year round, like all of the place. Yeah, I mean, obviously some of the closer places that are very popular are obviously Zion or Snow Canyon State Park. Or, or Arches. Pi or Pine Valley. But then like how Sean was saying, you know, there are some, you know, farther away, couple hours, you know, like Bryce Canyon, Arches, like, uh, Knob and you know there's so many. Knob's not even not like a couple hours away. It's pretty close. Yeah, though. it's yeah, it's like an hour. Two, two, I think it's like two hours. No. Oh, Knob. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. It's like two hours. But anyways, there's so many. You have so many uh, choices for camping, and it's just very popular. And again, like because of where we are, like the night sky is just lit. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you know, it's so clear here. It's but mm -hmm. in, in town you're gonna get light pollution because that's just what it is. But as you go. Yeah, out more into the wilderness. I mean, it's really stunning out here. Mm -hmm. So another thing, if you're driving around St. George, you're probably going to notice that people love their toys. You Lots know, of toys. They love dirt biking, you know, ATVing. That is another very popular activity out here. Yes, and I, I will say that, you know, so people, there's plenty of places to do this, these kind of activities. And again, having said that, like I've had clients that reach out and basically what they, what was important to them because they have the RVs, they have the you know, ATVs and the dirt bikes. They need a place to store all these toys, and so they were looking for home. So, a little quick tip: if you're if you have these toys, what you probably want to be focusing in on for a home, if you're buying a single family residence, is RV parking. So it's just like you know this wide driveway, and we've got an RV. I'm sure you know what that is. And then, of course, a lot of people like that third car for so they want a three car garage where they can put, park their toys. So that way, they have the space for their cars, as well as that third car garage, which is a storage space for their other toys and. And also what we have here too are, is RV garages, which is just crazy because it's just like a super sized garage where you can actually literally park your RV so it's not in the sun. So again, there's a lot of options, but if that's something important to you, just reach out to us so we can kind of point you to 
those properties that actually allow for, you know, again, for storage of all these toys. So another popular activity here is to go to our, one of our two reservoirs, well we have lots of reservoirs, but the most popular one is, you know, the Sand Hollow Reservoir yes. as well as Quell Creek. And then there's other ones like, uh, you know, Colob, which is right outside Zion. And then they're, they're honestly all over the place. But the two most popular ones are Sand Hollow and Quail Creek. And they definitely, not only are they beautiful, but when it's super hot, they do provide relief, you know, to the heat. Yeah, again, these are like where, like speaking of those, uh, those triathlons and everything, like the Ironman stuff, this mm -hmm. is where like they'd be swimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then another thing, these reservoirs, if you really like boating, uh, people, you know, are always taking their boats out there, or if you don't want to own it yourself, there's definitely lots of like boat rentals and, you know, stuff like that that you can be doing on the lake to get some relief from the heat. So another point that we want to make is just how close Zion is. It yes. is so easy. You know, Sean and I, we live, uh, you know, in St. George, like pretty close to the center of St. George. And it takes, it is just an easy trip to go to Zion. It took about an hour to get from where we are to the actual resort in Zion. So we're already through the entrance of Zion, mm -hmm. like a decent way in. And it was just, I, I was really shocked. I was like, wow, I didn't realize that we were only like one hour away from being pretty much in the thick of Zion there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the only thing that I will say is that Zion is very popular. You know, we're, we're not retired yet, so obviously if we are going to go, we will just take the day off in the middle of the week and take our kids out of school and just go. Well, actually having realized that though, like uh, we realizing how close it was, we were going, you know, why don't we just drop the kids off at school, <laughs> drive there, yeah. do the Zion thing, come back, pick them up from school because really, it's easy to make a quick half day out of it. You don't oh, have yeah. to. You don't have to plan a, a whole day or a weekend or anything like that. You can really go there just mm -hmm. just for a few hours. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But you know, just if you don't want to deal with the crowds, like we definitely recommend not going on like a popular weekend or like yeah, a you know like a holiday weekend or something. Like for that. sure. And, and again, the payoff is incredible because you'll your mind will be blown by just seeing the cliffs, the river, like, it just, it's so beautiful, like, it, words mm -hmm. can't describe it. Yeah, I mean, photos, videos, it just doesn't do it justice, no. so. So some people may wonder when they, if they want to move here to Utah, they may wonder, you know, I like to uh, partake in maybe some drinking from time yes. to time, some wine, spirits, beer, and they may think, oh, well, you can't do that in Utah. Yeah. And that is actually not true. I yes. mean, it is, I would say, harder to get alcohol here than in other states. But, you know, there are definitely bars here, there's breweries here, you know, restaurants serve uh, alcohol. And yeah, not all restaurants, of course. But, yeah, yeah. But a lot of restaurants do have like a full bar, so they do mm -hmm. serve alcohol. Mm -hmm. And also on top of that, so your grocery stores, they will sell beer, so at least you have that. Now, of course, your wines and your harder liquor, basically that's where you have to go to these state-sponsored mm -hmm. or state-owned like liquor stores. Mm -hmm. And there's a few of them in St. George itself. Mm -hmm. It obviously isn't as convenient as, you know, mm -hmm. like other parts of, of the country, certainly, but it's not like it's impossible to, to get alcohol. Yeah, for sure. And the good news is that if you're really like, you know, okay, you know, I just really feel like getting some alcohol quickly or whatever, Good news is that, you know, like, let's say Mesquite is like, what, 40 minutes down the 15 freeway. If you really want to just go there real quick and just pick up something, like you certainly have that option to, to probably just kind of go and then you have the normal rules. Yeah, I would say if anyone is preparing for like a big party or something like that, they will go to Mesquite because uh, the, the state sponsored liquor store, it is more expensive. Yeah, like, stuff isn't really on sale. No, well they also have a big tax too. Like there's and a big, tax. There's, a big <laughs> there's big taxes. You can tell that Sean and I really don't drink. But. Yeah. <laughs> But yes, uh, if you're you know preparing for like a big party or something like that, and you want to have alcohol, people will tend to go to Mesquite and and get the alcohol, so they don't have to pay the the taxes uh, for for Utah. So obviously that's kind of a ding, right? So let's I guess this gives us an opportunity to a little bit go into some of the shortcomings of St. George because obviously we want to be real here. So basically, obviously the alcohol thing. It's there, but obviously it's not as convenient as obviously most other places. Another thing is that obviously the the dining aspect, shopping we, and dining. Yeah, shopping and dining. Like so, shopping. So for a place of for a county of about two hundred thousand people, I would say Punch is above its weight class in that we do have all the like most of the big box stores: your Best Buys, your Home Depots, Lowe's. Costco, Walmart, Target, like so a bunch of stuff. But obviously we don't have everything because the population doesn't support it. Yeah. And then of course, uh, you know, so that's from the shopping aspect. And then from the dining aspect, we do have lots of, you know, places, dining establishments and stuff. I would 
honestly say that it's probably not like in general there's some there's some good restaurants but Obviously, it's not going to be a metropolitan area. We have just this huge variety mm -hmm. of, of like restaurants. So just be aware that the shopping and dining isn't that like the strongest suit of like St. George. Mm -hmm. Which will lead us to our next point. Though. Yes. Another thing that you can do if you decide you want to come here and live. Because where would you go for some of the best shopping and dining literally in the entire world? I would go to Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. <laughs> So yeah, so we got Vegas. So what's mm -hmm. great is that two hours down the 15 freeway, mm -hmm. you're right in the heart of Las Vegas on the strip or like right around there and all the shopping and mm -hmm. dining and entertainment for that matter you could ever ask for is so close. But again, you're kind of, again, you're not dealing with all that Vegas stuff all the time. Yeah. Like you're just getting two hour trek back and you're back home and, but you got, you can scratch that itch. We love to do that. Love to scratch that itch. You know, wherever we want to just go, you know, I want to need some good shopping mm -hmm. or need some good dining. Go to Vegas, get it done, come back. You're like, okay, I'm good. I, I, I did my quick little trip because really Vegas is good in little spurts. Like yeah. honestly, a weekend is more honestly, than enough. just one night. One night. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, when I say a weekend, like, you know, you're going there Saturday morning, you come back Sunday night. Mm -hmm. That's enough for us. Yeah, and I actually, so that's one thing I actually, when I moved here, because I'm a big foodie, like food is my life. So I was concerned. I'm like, you know, it's not going to have the high-end dining, the options that I'm used to. But really, because, you know, you're not eating that way every day, of course. I mean, most people just eat at home most days. Because Vegas is so close, I really do not miss that aspect yeah. of like living in a big city. Because For I'm sure. like, whenever I'm like, oh, I really want fine dining or some really good, you know, I don't know, like Chinese food or something. Vegas is right there. I go there, I stuff my face, come back, and I'm totally fine. Literally, you can make a day out of it. I mean, mm -hmm. so you could just go there in the morning, come back that evening. I mean, really, that's more than enough. Yeah. And honestly, it's it's such a nice, pleasant drive anyway. Mm -hmm. Again, it's fantastic. So it's, it's just great that, you know, proximity-wise, you get that small town feel of St. George, but then you can have that huge metropolitan. And Vegas is just, you know, dining and shopping and entertainment on steroids. And it's mm -hmm. so, you just have all that just so close by. Yeah, I kind of look at it like living in St. George. It's like having your cake and eating it too, because you get everything that's good about living in a small community, but you also have Vegas right there. You can get everything you want and then just come back. So that's it. That's our video. And remember, we are licensed realtors here in the state of Utah. So as much as we love making these videos, what we love more is to help you with your real estate needs. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a home, what you want to do is you want to give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. Or you can reach out to us via WhatsApp. However you want to get a hold of us, we've got your back.